But the ultimate example, the ultimate example, who do you think it is? The ultimate example is the father of all lies, the father of darkness, Satan, the devil. I want, I want you to read with me. Turn with me over to Isaiah chapter 14. The prophet Isaiah. There are two places in the prophets where God gives us just a glimpse of what happened. We believe that Satan was initially created to be the chief worshiping angel in heaven. We're going to see that here. But, but let's read it. Look at Isaiah chapter 14 and starting at verse 12. Now, the, the prophet here is, taking, is talking about the king of Babylon, which would be Nebuchadnezzar. But here he gives us just a glimpse. He, he kind of side, sidesteps a little bit and goes from the natural to the supernatural. And listen to what he says. How are you fallen from heaven, O who? To Lucifer. We all know who Lucifer was, don't we? Lucifer was one of the archangels. You know, Gabriel and Michael, Lucifer, they were powerful. It, angels aren't little girls flying around with wings. The angels were powerful, mighty, warrior angels. Lucifer was created to be the chief of all the worshipers. He was the worship leader in heaven. God help, God help worship leaders, all right? Listen. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For you said in your heart... Now listen, listen this, this is the same thing he tries to get us to do. The same temptation that brought him down, he places in us. You said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Lucifer actually thought he could outdo God. The same thing that we do. The same thing that mankind does. It's humanism. Although he wasn't human. The same source of pride. I don't need God. I'm better than him. It's the same lie that he told Adam and Eve in the garden. The same thing. You can be like God. God just told you not to eat of that tree because he, don't, he knows that if you eat that, you're going to be like him and he doesn't, want you, he, don't, he, don't, he doesn't want you to know that. The same lie. He says the same thing to us. We can be like God. We can figure out how to go to Mars. We'll go find life out there somewhere. We'll figure out how to cure cancer. They're still working on it. Ain't doing a very good job of it. We'll, we'll figure out how to, how to kill, uh, you know, uh, take care of all the diseases. I actually heard one time, this was laughable, <laughs> there, was, there was a thing on TV and they had like this guy on, he called himself uh, the Marvelous Atheist or something. I've, some, guy, some guy from YouTube, right? I mean, he, got, he put stuff on YouTube. He, he's the amazing atheist, he called himself. And, and he was sitting there and there was a couple uh, ministers there from somewhere. And this guy said, well, you know, mankind has figured out how to take care of most of the problems in the world. And I heard that. I, I, I laughed. I said, is this a joke or what? The more we try to figure out how to solve problems, the more we go. Satan said, I'm going to exalt myself above God. I will ascend into heaven in verse 13. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of north. I can be in charge. I can run the place as good as him, if not better. <laughs> verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Put this in perspective. Have you ever, now, now, maybe you've been on either side of this coin. Have you ever met somebody that thought they could do it better than you? <laughs> or maybe you have been there. Maybe you've looked at somebody and said, I can do better than him. I've told a story before about old Pastor Spencer. Poor old Pastor Spencer. I, oh, God bless him. He had to put up with me for, for a while. I I look and I say, why is Pastor Spencer? He's not doing this, or he should be doing this, or doing that. I start getting an attitude, you know. I get an attitude, and God spoke to me. And he said, "Just shut up and pray for your pastor as you support him." You know, you just you just you just 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 shut up. 
I mean, he wasn't doing anything. It was no sin or no horrible thing like that. It was decisions he was making. And I thought, I thought I could do a better job than that. And God said, yeah, so you'll get your chance. <laughs> Poor Pastor Spencer. When I see him in heaven, I'm going to have to ask him to forgive me. <laughs> but God told me, he said, sit down, be quiet, and, and you'll get your chance. I said, all right. Okay. And he, I did. <laughs> okay. But there are folks, when you've got somebody, when, you know, if you're, if you're doing something, and, and I know some of you, you know, own business and, and uh, businesses and so forth, and, and we, do th- we do things, things we've been doing for years, somebody comes along and says, oh, man, I can do better than that. Whatever. They think they know more? You gotta walk, a, you gotta walk a couple miles in somebody else's shoes. Somebody told the story one time about Pastor Carver up there, up on the hill. He said one time he was preaching. He got out, he took his shoes off, he threw them down, he says, here, walk in my shoes for a couple miles. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> oh, Pastor, you gotta know Pastor Dan, I appreciate it. Okay. He says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you are, shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And he goes on. One more passage and then we're going to be closing. Turn to the prophet Ezekiel. Just a couple books behind Isaiah. The prophet Ezekiel. And chapter 28. These are two places that tell us about Satan. Who he was and what he did. Again, Ezekiel here is talking to the king of, of Tyre, and he, and he again, he takes a little sidestep into the supernatural. Look at verse 11 of Ezekiel chapter 28. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God. Now, he's not talking about a human here, because what we're going to read here is not, is not in human terms. You seal up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Satan was one of the most beautiful creatures ever created. In fact, a lot of people, when you, when you read the story about the Garden of Eden, and Eve saw the serpent, people say, ooh, a serpent. But the, 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 the word there in the Hebrew is really, it means a shining one. One like a, covered with jewels. And listen to what he says. He was beautiful. He says, you seal up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You've been in Eden, the garden of God. This doesn't apply to any human being. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis and topaz and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the uh, carbuncle and gold. And workmanship of your tabards and of thy pipes was prepared in thee uh, in the day that you were created. God created Lucifer to make music. Those, those words he's using there are like pipes and horns and stuff. It's like a pipe organ. Lucifer had a built-in symphony. To make music, he was the worship leader in heaven. To praise God. And lead the angelic coast and saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Can you just imagine? What a position. He was like the greatest of all of God's creation. It says, in verse 14, You are the anointed cherub that covers, the covering angel. And I have set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. You had walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. I mean, here's Lucifer. He's in charge of everything under, under God. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. It was a choice that Lucifer made to exalt himself above God. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and you have sinned therefore. I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You've corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. See, Satan was so beautiful. He was so talented. He was so equipped. He was so full of the Spirit. He was the anointed cherub of God. And he got to the point where he said, Man, I don't have to bow down to him. I'll get everybody to worship me. That's what he said to Jesus when it was in the wilderness. 
He said, Jesus, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. And that's what he says to us, and we're just stupid enough to believe. We're suckers. Satan promises us, hey, man, I got it. I'll give you what you want. You want that position? I'll give it to you. Just fall down and worship me. Do it my way. Music? Man, Satan got music. (laughs) Oh, man, Satan got music. That fellow wrote that song, Why Should the Devil Have All the Good Music? <laughs> found out that fellow was a servant hymns just as much as anything, if you find out and read about it. But he wants us to bow down and worship him. And sad to say, we're dumb enough in church to do it. We'll bow down to pride. We'll bow down to, you know, to what, is, what is, exalts mankind. With our purpose. What does God want for me? What's God going to do with my ministry? What's God me, me, my, me, myself, and I, I, you know? And we do it in the name of Jesus. It's nothing but pride. And listen, it will lead to destruction. Because my Bible tells me that God's going to take Satan. And he's going to cast them in a lake of fire. That's that's what his end is. And all those that follow him are going to are going to follow him there. I always pray. I thank God. He's blessed us with stuff, and he's blessed us with talented people and people who are devoted to working for God and doing things. I say, God, never let us get to the place where we think we're something. You know what I'm saying? It's all right if things go well. We can say, thank you, Lord. Man, that was a good service. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for people getting saved. Thank you. Give him all the glory and give him the thanks. But when we think we found the key, man, I found a plan. I'm going to write a book. I got the program. All it is is pride. And I'm going to tell you something. I found this out for myself. Believe it or not, there have been a few times that I found myself getting a little proud. God has a way. He'll take that pride out of you. If you're really His, what's the word say? He loves those He chases. If you're really His, He'll take that pride out of you. He will. But that's all right. Because I'd rather go to heaven being humble and spend an eternity in hell with all that pride. It ain't going to give me nothing. Amen? Amen. All right. A little bit of wisdom for some dummies tonight. I'm the chief one. Okay? Anybody have any comments or questions before we close? Before we close.